On March the 10th, we have a healing new moon in the sign of Pisces, and it has a few positive surprises tucked up its sleeve. It's literally one of the better skies that I've seen in a long time. We're going to talk about how this Pisces new moon on March the 10th might impact you based on your sun, moon, and rising sign. Now, it's always best to listen to your rising sign. It'll be the most accurate. If you're not sure what your rising sign is, you can use my free tutorial in my description box below, not only to find your rising sign, but catch your chart in the old tradition of the whole sign house system. Once you go whole sign, you never go back. And when we delineate on YouTube, we're doing it as if we're talking whole sign houses. You can also listen for your sun for career and purpose matters and your moon for your home and body and safety needs as well as maybe your emotions. Certainly the rising sign will be very simply the most useful. But all three can be helpful as well. So you try that out and let me know how it goes. So welcome to my channel. And if you're new, my name is Lori Lothian and I'm using the Western Tropical Zodiac. I love the fixed stars and minor asteroids. We'll be talking about a few of those asteroids today. We've got a busy sky when it comes to the world of asteroids. We have Orcus, we have Icarus, Orcus, the god, Etruscan god of wealth, we have some going, ongoing action from Icarus who fell from the sky. So we'll talk about how those asteroids look in the collective story. In your own chart, I'm really going to focus on the lucky energy and the surprising positivity coming from a Uranus-Jupiter energy to the Pisces part of your chart. So we'll get into that shortly. Now, before we start as well, the only announcement I have as I record this on February 27th for my Patreon community who gets all my content early access ad free is that I am teaching my Sky Reader class again in April. I think we're starting April the 7th. It goes for six weeks and it's to help you time your own life, uh, time your best life by being your own astrologer. So get a handle on that by signing up for the wait list below so that you can get early bird ask access, know when the doors open and get into the class before it does fill up already. So that's my fifth time teaching. Check it out. Now let's start about talking about the moon. Um, hmm. I have been feeling like with the eclipse season coming up soon and stay tuned for my, my new eclipse video coming up shortly for a preview of the eclipses of March 25th and April the 8th, but that's not here yet. But before we get to the eclipse season, this March the 10th lunation is a little bit of a breath of a sigh of relief, breath of relief, a softer spot in the sky. And because it's a new beginning or a new moon at 10 degrees of Pisces, it doesn't create a new beginning for all of those people who have planets with a three degrees of 10 degrees of Pisces, especially, obviously it's your story, right? Your sun, moon and rising is going to be very important to you, but all of the mutable signs, Pisces and Virgo, Sag and Gemini, any planets there, especially your sun, moon or rising, near the 10 degree mark, this is going to be an important reset button for you mutable sign folk. This is a new beginning. Yes, it is a new moon. So in the two weeks that follow, you may sense what is beginning anew here for you. But also six months from now, we have a full moon in Pisces, then you're also going to get a sense of what this is really about. And those full moons in Pisces are always happening six months later. Okay, so this is going to be in what we call the Virgo season when the sun's traveling through the sign of Virgo, we'll have that full lunation. And so pay attention to that as we approach um, you know, the month of August into September. That's where this thing leads to. That's where it goes. That's where it's headed. Okay, but it's positive. Cool. So let me show you the sky, but also tell you about the Sabian symbol as well. With the lunation at 20 degrees and 16 minutes of the sign of Pisces, we round up by one degree to find the channel Sabian symbol by Elsie Wheeler uh, down in, the, in back in the 1930s. And from my book, A Screen of Prophecy, which is one of my preferential texts for the channel Sabian symbols of the degrees of the zodiac, I think this is interesting that just 21 Pisces is a little white lamb, a child, and a Chinese servant. Now, the whole write-up talks about diversity, uh, you know, uh, special, you know, um, let me give you some keywords here because it's interesting. The perceiving the beauty in difference, okay? And finding meaning and purpose and opportunity in diversity. Now, diversity is a very publicly, you know, big word these days, you know, and controversial word. So we might just say, uh, it's the kind of quality that when you bring three very different things together, a lamb, a child, and a Chinese serpent, servant, servant, <laughs> you get a kind of melange, eclecticism, amalgamation, a promise, a hom heterogeneity, dissimilarity, and difference. Now, when I think about that in the current global affairs, it is literally 
the opposite of that. It's not the promise of diversity, but the pain of diversity and the challenges that come with it. But I'll leave you with that symbol. And you can make of it what you will for that 20 degree slash roundup 21 degree Pisces uh, piece of sky that's very active for us. Interestingly, at 22 degrees Pisces, the Sabian symbol is a man bringing down the new law from the Sinai. And because the moon moves out of the new moon straight into that degree, that does bring to mind certain situations going on in the world in the Sinai Peninsula regarding the situation in the Middle East. So we'll see where that goes as well, because, of course, there's a potential that there will be a bunch of Palestinians pushed into the Sinai Desert in the next couple of weeks. We hope not. We hope not. Now, I'm going to show you this guy. We're not going to do much politics today. I will talk about King Charles. I know a lot of you have asked me to further up on that. I did predict in about four different videos. Go watch my Pluto in Aquarius latest video that King Charles would step down for health reading reasons. I also predicted because of the sky that Joe Biden would step down for health reasons, and I'm still predicting that. And we'll talk only a little bit about those two leaders, and then we'll do your sign. This is not one of my longer mundane entries uh, into this particular video. And by the way, if you're new to my channel, please like and subscribe. I put I put out 40 videos last month. If that kind of content interests you, there's a lot of content, a lot of content coming out on the regular with an all science delineation. And I also do all my premieres in um, all my content in premiere mode where I'm in the chat box in the live replay, and I'm helping you understand the content, take to your questions, have conversations. Um, you can also get more content with me present and, um, you know, I get to know me a bit. All right. So here's the story. You're probably obviously seeing a vaguely kite-like image in the sky on March the 10th. Indeed, you are. The kite is not really on the lunation per se. This is the new moon at 20 degrees. Let's annotate this, just to make it more simple for you. And then we'll go into the story. What's happening here? We have a bit of a, a stellium in the sign, a lot of planets here, in the sign of Pisces. This at the very bottom of the sky is the lunation, the new moon. This is Hygieia for health matters, medicine, and healing. And next to, by the way, Neptune. And Neptune rules the pharmaceutical in industry. And it's very possible with this combination, and Hygieia, hygiene was playing a big role during our pandemic, that we're going to see something in new beginning, new moon, to do with health and medicine in the next six months after this. Maybe an announcement of a new medicine already, or the fall of a new medicine. And you wonder, what does the fall of a new medicine look like? Well, Hygieia can really be like the whole medical establishment in one of her iterations. And Neptune, of course, is things that are deceptive, confusing, or, or just drugs in general, including big pharma. And this is Icarus here, and he's the guy whose wings melted and he fell from the sky. Now, if there is a fall of some kind of medical intervention, and it is, you know, a new beginning, new moon, it could be a new information about that. Mercury has moved into Aries at this point, and he would be the news guy, right? But you see that Jupiter is over here as well, and Jupiter is about justice. Now, he's also with Albion and Uranus. Okay, now Albion is like doing the way, not doing things the way they've always been done from the where the giants lived on high. So it's a bit of a rule breaker energy, a, a bust against the system, rail against the way it's always been done archetype. <clears throat> and Albion has been tracking with Jupiter for quite a long time. So there's always been this rail against the, the Jupiter stuff, which is justice and legal matters and legalities and sometimes, you know, leaders that can be Jupiterian. Uranus is also saying freedom and rebellion, and there is a flow between this section of the chart, and that's what we're going to talk about for your sign, because in your world, something good is trying to happen between Santa Claus and fairy godfather, you know, vibe, Jupiter, the greater benefic, something unexpected and exciting, but also maybe that kind of goes against the grain of the norm for you and for the world. And over here, Icarus is like, who's falling? What, you know, Icarus, uh, his dad was Daedalus, the inventor, created wings made of wax. Icarus what, tried to fly to the sun. That's called overreaching, overambition, right? Reaching for the height of the sun without checking in with his dad if these wings could possibly melt, which they did, and he fell from the sky. So yes, it's a bit of a pride, hubris, overreach, and, you know, the kick-ass you know, come back as you fall from the sky. Falling from the sky when you see Icarus here with the sun is world leader. 
We do already know that King Charles will likely be stepping down because of a health challenge and also Joe Biden probably because Joe Biden and King Charles Charles both have their moon at zero degrees of Taurus. Now over at zero degrees of Taurus, which is where Jupiter for King is sitting, um, that is King Charles's 10th house of career and reputation and Joe Biden's house of sickness. Both of them are having a a, a difficult time from the eclipse at five degrees of Taurus, October 28th, followed by Pluto moving into zero degrees of the sign of Aquarius. All of this squaring from Pluto or the eclipse damaging the moon of both of those uh, public figures. The moon can represent the body. So there is a problem with the body of King Charles and his moon will be eclipsed and it was eclipsed and his high noon, high noon reputation is going to be eclipsed. So therefore he's probably stepping down this year. Any astrologer who watched the time that of his inauguration knew this was happening, by the way, because of eclipse on the inauguration. Also, we can look at the idea that Joe Biden's moon in the house of sickness has not only looked like a, a propulsion in his polls going down because the moon is we the people in the public and the house of the general uh, workers and the worker bees of the sixth house of the United States. So in Joe Biden's chart, he's the leader. So you can overlap that plus his chart and United States line up. The U.S. is Sag rising, Biden's Sag rising. But also you can see that that moon has been really, really hit hard by Pluto. And there's a lot of talk now that Joe Biden may have some cognitive frailty that would not allow him to continue in his role as the world leader or, or the United States um, president, president and you know one of the big, biggest, most influential world leaders in the world. Um, a lot of people could see this uh, cognitive frailty starting a year ago and even some zodiacal releasing show what was going on there. But God forbid, a year ago, you said that he looks like he's suffering from some form of dementia. You were trolled. Now everyone says, even the New York Times, he's got some sort of dementia. You know, being a foreteller, future seer, prophet is really a painful job because things you say, because you see them clearly, like lab leak, Nord Stream pipeline, all that stuff, common sense half the time. And you make a comment about it, proxy wars and all of that. Um ahead of the curve, it just equals a high level of troll, you know, and I'm just going to laugh at it now. Oh, somebody trolled me recently and said that obviously that my channel is I have an AI script that I've generated and I'm just reading it. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. All right. Finally, this is a kite. Take a look. Okay. Now it's really off center of the boon because the kite is really anchored on Saturn Icarus. Saturn can represent governments and bureaucracies this falling with the sun, government, bureaucracy, structures, and of course, the fall of sun leader institutions like ICJ, like the United Nations can be Saturnian by nature. Um, in the sky for, let's say, um, in the sky for, um, for Joe Biden, or for the United States of America, because they have the same chart. Let's go for the United States of America, Sibley chart as a Sag rising, right? Netanyahu is also a Sag rising. This means that there is a fall of some world leader or institutional body, melting wings, new moon, perhaps in the two weeks after the new moon of March 10th, but perhaps in the six months that follow as well. Keep your eye on that ball. Again, with Hygieus, somebody could be having diffuse amorphous, confusing health problems that no one's sure of, and they're also falling. The fourth house of the United States Sibley chart represents the, um, <laughs> speak English, the high part of the sky, the where the leader of the, the country would sit, right? The president sits in the 10th house. That's where the United States would have world leaders, their own leader show up. So it is a sun in the high noon or 10th house of the United States chart. So I will predict boldly that Joe Biden will find himself having a major health problem. Let me say this again. According to this chart, this new moon in Pisces will maybe take down a melting wings of a world leader who is an elder, Saturn. In my humble opinion, this is probably the downfall of Joe Biden. I'm gonna stop the share for just a second. And I'm going to say it to my camera. And you're probably wondering why, because I have a video editor and he'll make a short edit of this if I ask him to. Look, we have a new moon in Pisces and it's going to happen in March on the 10th. And it looks to me like Joe Biden is going to be impacted. And in the probably two weeks that follow, there will be some news about his health and well-being. It can look like over the six months that follow as Joe Biden stepping down from power because this particular lunation 
is sitting with Icarus, the wings of a, someone falling from a great height. I expect Joe Biden to be either stepping down by, uh, you know, example, like he chooses to leave, or maybe being forced to, or perhaps just going into some health frailty and having to leave his position of running for president in the United States as a consequence of the Icarus Sun Saturn Elder lunation of March the 10th, 2024. Now, let's go back to the sky. That was just for my video editor. Now, guys, I've got some shorts out there. Go check them out. They're doing pretty well. I don't have time to do original shorts, but I do repurpose the content. So back to the kite. Long story short, it looks to me like a simple kite, right? It's it's attending the moon because Icarus and Saturn, elder falling from the sky, who's a leader in the high noon of the United States chart. All right, who else could it be? It could be another leader in the United States. But here's what I'm seeing. There's generally a vibe in the sky, all right, that's going on with this kite to say Orcus, the god of wealth, punisher of broken oaths with Juno, vows and contracts and, and commitments, right, in Virgo the sign of health, but also Virgo, the sign of the fourth house of the United States, which means the party that's in opposition to the ruling party. So this would be the Republican Party. Okay, opposite a world leader. So maybe this is Biden. They're telling him step down already. Punish your broken oath. You have an oath to be in office as long as you're cognitively fit for office. Maybe you broke your oath. That's an example. Then we also have the kite looking at over here. This particular our asteroid is Ixion, the rule breaker, the transgressor. Over here, Albion breaking rules and doing it the way it's not been done before. Uh, can bring rage as well as 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 just breaking and, and transgressing the morals of the day. So there's a lot to say about what's happening here in this sky. It can also involve Netanyahu, by the way, but we're not going to do much about him today. I'd rather stay clear of that uh, story in the Middle East right now. Um, it just doesn't feel like I want to go into it. But in general, um, Netanyahu is indeed a Sagittarius rising and therefore this is happening in his 10th house of career, and he may have, in the six months that follow, a fall from power as well. Now, one of the, one of the best things about this whole sky, and this is where we're going for your sign in a very short minute, is the Vestal Flame of Devotion and Perseverance, of course. An innate, yes, don't go, oh no, square to the moon. It's simply a, a push and shove for decisions and actions, for you to choose what you wish to devote yourself to that's worthy of your sacred attention in life so that you can have a new beginning in your Pisces part of your sky. And at the same time, Jupiter, lucky Jupiter with surprising Uranus, supports this in a way that says good things come out of your Taurus house. Surprise, Jack in the box, yay. So Taurus, Pisces, surprise, positive, good developments, maybe luck, money, well, and then a need from this moon in the two weeks and six months that follow to to create that sacred flame that you want to tend, that you can't let it go out, that tends what this good thing is that's trying to show up for your life. And to do what you need to make, take change actions and changes and decisions, a square, the nature of Mars that require your participation. Things in life can uh, elbow you in the right direction when you see a square. Now, we're gonna do the all signs portion. Don't forget to like and subscribe. A quick shout out to my some of my regulars, Boiling Frogs, <laughs> uh, Stupider 8, Misbehaving, uh, L.A. Taylor, uh, Psychic Readings with Rose, Bold and Beautiful, Taro, Stephanie, Bella, Melanie, uh, Melissa Carey, a Mel there's a Melanie in there, I forgot your last name, uh, Stephen, the Jupiterian, of course, um, and who else? There's some newbies in there, discerning like Crystalline Alchemist. Oh, some real good newbies coming in lately with great channel names. I love the new channel names, by the way. Um, I'll have to write you guys down. Thanks for being a part of my crew, coming to my live premieres, helping my channel grow. A uh, last call for uh, likes and subscribes, but especially likes. The algorithm loves the likes. The more you like the, the channel, the more the channel likes me, the more... I want to be continuing on to grow here and, exp and experience the excitement of sharing my passion for astrology with all of you guys on YouTube land. So don't forget that like button is a press of a finger. It doesn't require much effort, but it makes a big deal in my world of YouTube, YouTube algorithms. Alrighty, let's get ahead with your sign. We're going to start, of course, as we always do with Aries. Okay, so I did start off by telling you guys that this was going to be a healing 
healing moon. And the reason I'm using the word healing is Hygieia, which is not about like masking up and medical procedures, can also be about the preventative healing of the mind, body, spirit. In the ancient world, people had temples to her in local environments in your little town, and maybe in the alcoves and alleyways of the of the winding quarters of the ancient world. You didn't have to go traveling off to see her at some pilgrimage temple far away. And so she was kind of like the walking clinic of the ancient world. So she can be very healing for you at the mind, body, and spirit level, as well as the positive surprises that Uranus, Jupiter are applying to this moon. So we'll go ahead and start with that backdrop of reminding you why we're doing it this way. Let's go ahead and start with Aries. Let's do Aries first. I am one of you, sun, moon, and rising. I have a sun and a moon in Aries which is why I talk fast. And if I'm too fast for you, here's a tip. You can slow the playback speed down with a little gearbox that's for free on your channel. I may sound drunk to you on your when you're watching this if I'm slowed down, but at least you'll be able to follow what I'm saying. All right, Aries, Aries sun, moon, and rising sign. So basically what we're seeing here is we have a new moon in Pisces that happens every year. It initiates a new beginning in your 12th house. This is a deep soul workplace. Okay. Like it's like, you know what I mean? Meditate, pay attention to your dreams, uh, deep dive into your unconscious mind. Um, things where you undo yourself like addictions are here. And this can be a reset button around any addictions that you might have because the new beginning allows you to start fresh here. As well, a reset button here can be very much resetting your connection to foreign countries, foreigners and foreign lands, especially if those foreign people are connected to commerce and trade. In our modern day, we have borderless income, international revenue when we use payment processors and credit card processors in our online businesses, for example. So for some of us, this is also a money house. And therefore, there's a new beginning and a reset in this part of your sky. Now, of course, we do have Icarus and there is a kite here. So watch that you don't kind of fall from some great height of trying to attain something that's impossible. So just check that your wings don't melt in this part of your sky. But mostly I want to focus on the positive. And what I really want to talk about is how Jupiter is acting as a agent of great surprise with Uranus. Surprise! By breaking the rules and doing it your own way, you can have some kind of pop in your resources and money. Income increase and wealth increase happen when Jupiter is here. And I love him here. He's the Hail Mary pass. You've had a lot of money improvements, hopefully. Aries, since last year, when he, in the month of May, entered into your second house. However, he was pretty debilitated by retrogradation and proximity to the node of fate, and he really got his groove on after December 31st through to the end of May this year. You, Aries, are finding an increase in your earnings, especially you, Aries rising and Aries sun. So second from the sun, Aries rising, this is earnings energy. And so there's an increase in the money that you're making especially if it's things you're doing in the back room of your life, you know, plotting world domination, new structures for your your earnings, new ideas. But also just don't forget, if you have international revenue as a way to make money, this is going to be surprise in the two weeks that follow the March 10th moon, but maybe as well in the six months after, because all new moons are waiting for the full moon six months later. As well, take a gander at what you must devote yourself to, like a sacred priestess tending the Bic lighter of world peace. <laughs> she was the tender of the Pax Romana, the Roman peace, and there were six of them conscripted to do the sacred duty. What is your sacred duty to tend a devotional flame of perseverance in the house of writing? in the third house of siblings and travel, in the house of the online social media platforms and websites. I, for one, will be writing my Deep Code Astrology book, Come or Hell or High Water, and maybe my Wine Lover's Middle Way, as, a, as well as other projects. So your sacred devotion is in that part of the sky. Finally, if you want to be devoted to another person, and for some reason that's going to be useful for you, those people of your third house are your younger sibling your cousins, nieces, and nephews, perhaps, and neighbors and childhood friends. So you may find yourself tending the devotional flame to one of these types of folks, but that devotional flame will bring back the goods here in your 12th house of all the things I've delineated for you. Wait, anything else? Hmm. No, that's about it. Taurus, sun, moon, and rising sign. 
This is a sky where you're seeing this energy of a new beginning that happens on the yearly. This is March the 10th. And this new moon in the two weeks and therefore, and also six months that follows is starting a new beginning for you in the house of groups of friends, friendship circles, social networks, uh, clubs and things you belong to, but also a new beginning in the house that is all about your long range goals and plans and dreams for your life. And you're setting those things afresh and anew. It's really a new reset button. And the way that you create greater gains from your Aquarian 10th house of career, including financially. So here comes a new beginning, a new reset, a new button of, of starting something fresh. Because you also see that you have Hygieia for healing, you may be healing something with a friendship or group of belonging as well. They'll watch that you don't fall from the sky in some over ambitious reach with Icarus nearby. So be careful for how high you reach in some kind of career goal or dream. Pay, uh, pay attention to what's possible and not possible. Mostly I want to focus, of course, on the positive story here, which is surprises that are lucky from Uranus, who is sitting with Jupiter. Don't forget, Jupiter is the lunation uh, a deposit, a dispositor. He's a, he's the guy who rules what's happening in his house. So he's going to try to pull that from that sextile into something good to do with your health, your body, your identity, or just you feeling damn lucky, surprising luck. Now with Albion, how are you gonna do things differently than they've been done before? How are you gonna adjust and do your, regulate reality from your own innovative, freedom loving, outside the box way? Because doing that sort of Iranian freedom loving, rule breaking archetype for you does lend itself to new beginnings in the way your dreams can come true and your earnings can unfold in a greater way from your career. You want to tend a sacred flame to the earnings house, right? Vesta is in the money-making house for you. There she sits down here. She's literally like, you know, your paycheck, your daily, your grind, the way you want to make money. And you're, you're being asked in some ways to really attend to, attend to that. Um, you might want to quit, give up, not work so hard. You might want to not want to tend that flame, but this is a devotional energy that can increase your long range career gains. Don't forget Saturn rules your 10th house of that career and reputation. And he's working for you in that 11th house to bring money to you from your career stories. And so by tending the flame of devotion to the earnings and resources part of your chart, it looks like something lucky is going to try to break through in the first two weeks after this moon. And perhaps as well in the six months after. I can hear you ask me what kind of luck would that be? I don't know. Mercury brings good news and he's in the backroom deals and negotiations. So maybe people are chattering about you in the backroom deals uh, part of the sky about giving you a raise, a promotion, or an offer for a new position if those things make sense in your world. Gemini, sun, moon, and rising sign. Here we have a sky that's saying to us, you have a 10th house matter going on with this new beginning. As new moon happens every year here around this time of year, and you get to reset things in your work and career space. And so this is a time to do that. And you're looking at a reset that you're obviously going to be cautious not to fall from your melted wings from the top of the sky. That could look like getting fired or burning out in your career or finding some kind of overreach that you just kind of crash to the ground from. So be careful for that, of course, in the two weeks especially that follow the moon. But you're also trying to do something that heals this career space as well. So what are you healing here? I mean, what does that look like to heal the career space? Maybe it's about being more holistic, finding the kind of prevention that you don't fall from the sky. Those matters are experienced with Hygieia. You might notice that Jupiter is saying, surprise with Uranus, right? Jupiter, the ru ruler of the lunation, the dispositor, sitting with Uranus and the rule breaker, Albion. How are you going to do things differently in 12th house matters? Now, 12th house matters have a whole range of things, right? Well, it could be your money you generate from foreigners, foreign shores, and international revenue because you're using borderless income payment structures and you have virtual money or digital income. Yeah, it could be all that kind of stuff. It can also be how you're going to innovate and break some rules around sab self-sabotage, addiction, and self-undoing, and do it your way. Forget AA, you got your own method, right? <laughs> and that can really support you in your career path in some way that you didn't anticipate in surprising and delightful ways, not only in the two weeks that follow, but in the six months that follow the moon, because we're waiting for the full moon in the summertime, in the late summer.
And then we have a vestal flame of devotion. How do you want to devote yourself to your body, your health, your wellness, and your identity? How can you tend a sacred flame that's all about you, not somebody else, not your clients, not your partner, not your, not the others in your life. You're tending a flame of devotion to yourself because you're worth it. So that can look like a lot of things. I have a progressed sun in Gemini. You're always going to listen to your rising sign, your regular natal chart. You can listen from a progressed chart secondarily, but my progressed sun is my career, right? Sun is career, moon is home, all that stuff. And so I'm looking at that, tending a sacred flame of devotion in the next six months to my well-being, mind, body, and spirit as I continually ascend to new heights, <laughs> Icarus, in my YouTube channel success or whatever else, but don't want to fall from the sky. I could almost say that by tending a sacred flame of self-devotion, a lot of Geminis can avoid career burnout. It's that simple, you know? Finally, luck coming from the 12th house. Gurus, spiritual teachers, and ashrams can surprise you. Uh, this can also lend itself to some surprising developments for career and professional education in the next six months for some Gemini sun, moon, and rising. All right, Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising sign. This is going to look like a sky that opens up a corridor for you of a new beginning in your house of God, and it flows to you. So you're enjoying the ride. This is like, yay me, flow to my, uh, my um, Cancerian identity. So you like this moon every year. It feels really good for you. You're kind of jiving with it. This new moon would say something like, how are you healing your spiritual philosophy, belief, and, and ideology by which you live your life. You may also be healing your sense of a relationship with a spiritual authority, the sun, especially one that may have had a fall from grace. Maybe you found out your preacher's been fooling around with, you know, somebody in the church and was really gnarly. Maybe you don't like the setting of your religious environment anymore. You've had a fall from it. You've fallen from the from the belief structures you used to have. Now you're trying to heal that. Now, technically, higher education belongs to the fifth house, and you definitely can be experiencing some kind of dynamic shift in the next six months about your uh, higher educational and uh, you know sec post-secondary educational directions. If you're in the book publishing world, of course, this is the house for you. And Neptune, the storyteller, new moon, new beginning, Saturn can represent a traditional publisher. Good things could happen here. Now, the happy surprise is if any of those areas of life are true for you. Oh, yes, and courts and judges ruling on your behalf. I mean, it's good like the judge stepping down, right? <laughs> the judge falls from the height, height of the sky and you get a better judge for some, some reason. <clears throat> but anyway, the happy surprises are coming from your 11th house of good spirit where good things happen anyway, like windfalls. People who belong to that are your friends and social networks, groups of belonging, elder sibling, good surprising things can show up from that elder sibling relationship or uh, groups of friends who are benefactors, who really want to help you, who want to be, you know, kind of like giving you fa favors, friends in high places, especially with Jupiter here and siblings in high places can be really supportive of you in surprising and delightful ways. Um, there's okay to break the rules, by the way, with your, your dreams and wishes and goals. If you had some long range plans that you are putting into place because your vision for your life is here, you can have some surprises, surprising changes, but your great career gains come from here too. Really good. The perks, the rewards, the academy red carpet rollout, the, you know, the, the increasing like significant money from your career. And that could be a surprise for you. You may see a financial pop coming through your sky in the two weeks after the moon or even the six months after. You want to tend a sacred devotional flame to your inner spiritual life, especially with the house of God active. This is asking you to meditate, to settle in, to write your dreams down, to maybe uh, tend your alone and solitude time in a sacred way, to really own that um, solace and solitude is what I always call it, because your alone, introspective, contemplative time is very precious. The sacred flame is like the monk, the nun, the temple priestess tending the fire of devotion to something more meaningful than the daily grind. And this moon in the next two weeks will show you how to do that, but also may open up a corridor over the six months ahead for a new spiritual practice or devotional practice that puts you in a better state of connection to the meaning of your life. Ninth house. 
I'm just going to pause the recording because I'm now finding my room cold. I think I just saw snow outside in Vancouver, Canada on February 27th. You can't make this stuff up. And uh, so while I go put the heat back on, don't re just a reminder, Sky Reader starting. Don't forget to check it in April. Um, I usually cap the number of people who can come into the class so I can follow your homework. And we have Facebook meeting, a group. We have weekly Q&As and we have weekly live calls. Of course, replays are available. Um, so if you want to find out more about that, check my description box below. And I'll be right back after I warm this room up. Let's get back to it, shall we? All right. So <clears throat> back to the charts and share the screen. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Back to the, I just had to really crank the heat up, literally snowing in Vancouver. What's the date? Where are we? What time of year am I on? The 20. 7th of February. I guess like, uh, that's winter. Okay. I don't, I don't want to complain. So, okay. Leo, sun, moon, and rising. Uh, so Leo's, what we have is a new beginning that happens on the yearly and it's in your eighth house of chunky money. This, I coined it that, but it's my own term. It's the money you're not earning directly. So, you know, an inheritance, a tax rebate, insurance payouts, money you share with a spouse. I think I said inheritance, that kind of stuff. Investment money, like where money makes money in the stock market for you, because you're sharing other people's money. When you borrow money, that's going to be banks and more mortgages and stuff like that. So that kind of money is being highlighted for you as a Leo. You may be looking squarely at your savings, your mortgages, your money, like an investment, your 401k, but it's a new beginning. So we have Saturn giving you form and structure. Be careful you don't do anything risky. I don't like a, um, Icarus here for like risky stock investments, right? Because this is like falling from the sky with a melted wings. Don't be over ambitious and or risk taking here. But this new moon in the two weeks that followed March 10th and the six months that follow can bring some kind of financial healing for Fiscal hygiene. Certainly with hygiene, it's fiscal hygiene. This is a house of taxes. You're trying to reset your fiscal hygiene in this new beginning, new moon. It's also the occult mysteries and magic. New beginning here can lead some of you to dive into tarot astrology and other alchemical, paranormal, and supernatural type stuff. Well, it's also talking to me a lot about how you get some lucky surprises in your career and reputation space by being innovative and freedom loving. That's Albion and Uranus and Jupiter lucky. You've been going through a bit of a lucky career space anyway already since last year when uh, Jupiter got into your natal 10th house in May and leaves us the end of this May. And so this is your time to thrive in your career and reputation. That aside, this is a surprise because Uranus is, of course, sextiling the lunation. Who knows what Uranus is going to bring? But because Jupiter's here and he owns the real estate of Pisces, it's a positive, happy surprise in your career two weeks after or six months after this moon, most likely impacting you on the plus side of your finances. You want to tend a sacred flame of devotion to Vestal's call in your 11th house. Are you devoting yourself to an elder sibling? Are you devoting your, is your elder sibling devoting to you? Is there a devotional flame to your dreams, goals, and long range plans for your life? Are you devoting yourself to things to do with your greater career gains? If that's ca the case, money is in the 11th, money in the 8th. It really says it's time to really maximize that career success and create the gains that you're capable of by being devoted to the earnings and gains story. But hey, the eighth house of chunky money also is asking you to be fiscally hygienic and make sure you learn maybe to save the money that you're making. You never know. It could be a part of the story. At the end of the day, you may have some windfalls. If you're devoted to your work, you can get some kind of positive uh, pennies from heaven vibes going on in that 11th house. But the pennies from heaven could come from it. A friend is a benefactor, or an ally or an elder sibling, because the vessel flame is in the house of those kinds of people who may be devoted to you. All right, let's move into our next story. That will end up looking like my Virgo's Virgo rising sun and moon. I have a Virgo sun, S-O-N, with a Virgo sun. S-U-N, Virgo rising daughter, Virgo rising and son, S-O-S-U-N, best friend. <laughs> My ex-husband's new woman is uh, Virgo rising and I'm friends with her. Like you can't make up how many Virgos I keep collecting as an Aquarius rising. It, it just it bedazzles me. My mom was a Virgo. I have a thing for Virgos. So let's talk about you guys. So first of all, this is a new moon in the house of your relationships. Now, if you have a relationship already, you're in a marriage, in a long-term committed monogamous relationship, a new beginning is forming here. It's a fresh start. It's asking for a fresh start. 
Right. And so if there have been challenges in a major relationship, and for goodness sakes, with Saturn there since last March, not leaving till February 26, he's kicking the tires and looking for cracks in the foundation of that relationship. It's either going to level up, like getting married, moving in and stuff like that, or it's going to fall apart in the next three years. This is a time of testing. And therefore, because this is a new beginning, it's a time to refresh the screen in a longer term business partnership or an existing relationship. Then seventh house functions as a marketplace, 10th from your 10th. And it's where you reach your audience, your clients, your public. And that is having a reset refresh button as well. Because you have Icarus, you may have a fall from a power, like a falling from the sky, the melting wings, but not you. Could be your marriage partner's falling. Could be your business partner's falling. Could be one of your clients is falling, really. So maybe they're going to go through a harder time where they've reached with over ambition to the heights of a sky and they're having a fall. And you might have to be there to help them. And this resets the new beginning and an existing love story. If you're single, of course, it could be a new relationship wanting to come in in the six months or two weeks after this moon. If so, it's karmic because Saturn is there, soulmatey because Neptune is there, right? And healing because Hygieia is there. There's surprises that delight you coming off of this lunation in your ninth house of God, which is about your spiritual belief and your philosophy of life. But it's also on a practical note, the ninth house of foreigners, foreign countries, foreign travel, visas, judges, courts, book publishing, third marriage partnerships. That is all having happiness, happy surprises. Okay, I may call this the happy surprise. I'm going to call this the happy surprise new moon. So happy surprises coming off your ninth house in the next six months or two weeks after the moon. You might get a sudden opportunity to travel abroad with your partner, a sudden breakthrough in a court matter and a legal contract, a sudden breakthrough in an academic setting. Courts and academic settings are a ninth house matters. Certainly it can be very lovely for some unexpected positive developments in university college environments for you. And because maybe you break the rules, my daughter is a university student finishing her last year. She writes, one time she wrote an essay that she broke the rules of the essay and she got the best mark in the, the class. So, you know, finding your inner rebel and doing it your own way, I'll be on Uranus in academic settings mm -hmm, can be very, very super good for you guys right now. The vessel flame you have to tend is to your career and work. Now, if you're like a retired or a student, you're tending a flame to what you're doing in the world as a retiree or a student. That's your job, right? I'm, I'm going to say your job is to be a student, then that's your reputation as a student. You want to tend the flame. If you're retired and you're spending time working in soup kitchens or golfing all day or learning to belly dance, that's your reputation. <laughs> so you're tending a sacred flame to your visible reputation and actions in the world so that you can derive the benefit of the new beginnings in the marketplace, clients and audience and other. For example, if you're entrepreneurial, this would be tending the flame of your reputation, maybe just by spending the time it takes to promote your work or your business or to share it with the world. It's because you're putting a light or a fire at the top of your sky. It can lend itself, of course, to some really intense perseverance needed in the two weeks and six months that follow to tend to the clients, the marketplace and the audience in your work life. Otherwise, I love the ninth house surprises for you. They flow to you, you know, Taurus, Jupiter flowing to you in your first house of identity and body. So you're going to love the vibe here. You are looking at life through the lens of the Punisher of Broken Oaths and the goddess of committed marriage. Juno, a lot of you are really trying to suss out what you want to do in a long-term committed love. If you're already with someone, someone, that's for sure. And if you're not, you're looking for someone who's faithful and true, who's also going to want to commit. Again, Saturn coming through here for the next, until February 26, brings those karmic and committed love stories. Quite often with somebody who has an age difference from you, just keep that in mind. Significant age difference, younger or older. All right, Libra, sun, moon, and rising sign. It is a sky that opens up a beginning of something fresh and new every year. This is the time of year where you get the new beginnings in your health and work routines. If you've not been taking care of your body or health, this is a time to reset that. Uh, clearly with Hygieia, it's even doubled down on health and health, hygiene and health matters. So resetting your health protocols and tending to your better physical, uh, you know, daily life routines that can improve your health seems to be big for you here. 
And you know, with high, with the best, um, with the Icarus thing and Saturn working hard, you're grinding. Every Libra is in a grinding work hard mode since last March through to February 2026, and you can burn out in your work. And so this can be Icarus falling from the sky, can be somebody in your workplace getting fired, the boss stepping down. That could be good for you, right? But also you could be burning out, you could be falling from the sky. So be more careful here in the six months after this moon. It's a warning signal. But lucky breaks are coming in the chunky money house in the wake of this lunation. Jupiter owning the sixth house, which includes debt, credit card debt, mortgage debt, debt, all right? Looks like Jupiter wants to pay off a debt for you. And it can be in the next six months that you have some chunky money that allows you to eliminate debt, especially even mortgage debt with some stuff going on down here. Now, this is inheritances. You're in an inheritance transit. I just had to call it the bequeathment transit that started last March and ends, oh, started last May and ends uh, in the third week of May this year. So with Uranus bringing the lucky, happy surprise, we don't always want someone to pass, but it could be, oh, someone's passing and you're gonna hear about an inheritance as well. Or with Alby on the rule breaker, maybe somebody just is breaking the rules of bequeathments and legacy wealth and giving you some chunks of money in another way. Certainly with series at the bottom of the sky, for some of you, this definitely look, can look like legacy wealth is trying to head your way. <laughs> All righty, over the course of the next few months. All right, lastly, pets. Yes, you're having a new moon in the beginning in the house of pets and rentals to rent a property or to be a landlord and rent it out, right? So these are new beginnings for you as well that may be playing out in lucky ways that surprise you. You need to tend a sacred devotional flame to your ninth house. This is your meaning of your life. Do you have any meaning in your life? Otherwise, tend a flame to your academic studies, tend a flame to your third marriage partner, tend a sacred flame to your uh, legal and court cases. Otherwise, what is the devotional flame in the house of God that needs your attention over the next six months? So do you have a spiritual practice? Do you have a spiritual philosophy? Are you lacking in it? This is the house of book publishing. If any one of you is at all in the book publishing industry, tending a flame in the house of publications is important, especially because Jupiter in the royalty house can make you benefit from that. A Jupiter who owns your house of writing doubles down for some Libras, Libra library book to succeed uh, in the next six months in the publishing industry, if that's something you want to be sacredly devoted to. Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising sign, you have a beginning of a moon here on March the 10th uh, in your fifth house of romantic love. Of course, anytime a new moon happens in the romance house, it can portend a new romance coming into your life in the six months that follow this lunation. Also, a, new, a pregnancy or fertility signature with that beginning as well. So this is a time of year where these things, new beginnings in, in children, new beginnings in love are possible. If you're already in a relationship, it can reignite the spark of that relationship and refresh the romance in the relationship. This is particularly true for you have an existing love relationship because Jupiter is blessing your existing love relationship, both your partner and the marriage itself or the relationship itself uh, through to the end of May. And he owns this new beginning of the fifth house. So this looks like a reigniting of the, of the romantic, the you know, sensual, the fun, the joy, and the pleasure and the play with a significant marriage type partnership for a lot of Scorpio risings, sun and moon secondarily. If you have a creative edge, you're an entrepreneur or you're an artist and you create things and you're giving birth to creative projects in that fifth house, then this is going to look like a nice little pop of an unexpected breakthrough. Something could go viral on the internet, something could really take off, especially since Saturn accompanying this lunation owns your third house of social media platforms. So some of you could have a creative pop in the next six, two weeks, two weeks after the moon on March 10th or six months afterwards. Um, there is a kind of quality here of your partner maybe having a delightful surprise if you're in a committed love. If you're single, of course, a new relationship could start with a long-term and benefic partnership, but with Uranus, totally not your type. Somebody you never thought you'd get involved with can come your way. You're breaking the rules in love, right? Albion's there. This isn't, or they're the rule breaking, but you're going to go with it anyway. You want to tend a sacred flom, flom, <laughs> sacred flom, attend the sacred flom. You want to tend the sacred flame of devotion and duty and perseverance in your eighth house of chunky money. Look, hey. 
This is your taxes, your 401k, your savings that you invest money in places. This is your mortgage payments. This is your long range, you know, joint monies held with your spouse or business partners. So you're really having to devote yourself to that. You might have to tend that flame. You have to stoke the flame, keep it alive, spend some attention there, right? It's, it's demanding your attention. If you're a creative, you know, I'm making, you know, books or something happen. Let's just make a story up here. Then this is your tending the flame of your income from those projects, whether they're royalty or passive residual income or whatever that looks like. You might want to tend that flame as well. You know, stoke the flame of evergreen passive income from your entrepreneurial business, that kind of stuff, rather than paycheck and earnings money. Hey, Sagittarius, sun, moon, and rising. We have a moon here that happens on the yearly. This is March the 10th. New beginnings in the fourth house of land, home, property, and real estate. Well, that's obviously what it sounds like, domestic life as well. You might get a new home. You might buy a new home, sell a new home, you know, move to a new home. For you, especially rental properties are highlighted with Jupiter in your sixth house. Rent out a property or rent, you know, become a landlord, rent a property, or be a tenant and lease a new property for some Sagittariuses. The new beginning here, you're just going to watch you don't have an Icarus moment where you're reaching too high for something with over ambition and you fall from the sky and feel constricted. But you're also doing some hygiene in the home. This could be cleaning a home, could be de decompressing like the Marie Kondo thing, get rid of the junk, organize the drawers, um, clean up your home, make it healthier as well. Um, you may also find that this is going to have some connection to your family of origin, your mom especially, and you beginning in the relationship you have to those people. Because you have some happy surprises coming off your sixth house, things to do with the home are also benefiting you in the area of pets and in the area of rentals, as well as your work routines and health routines being beneficial by changes and new beginnings you're making in and from your home to improve your health. And breaking the rules in so doing, because you have Jupiter on Albion, the rule breaker, and the happy surprises come from also breaking rules at work and health routines or tenancy agreements and pets, you know, whatever the rules are, benefiting you as a new beginning in the house of home. Tend a sacred devotional flame to your marriage partner or have them tend a flame towards you, right? Or what perseverance, dedication needs to happen in a committed long-term relationship to a customer, a client, or even your significant other in order for you to really reap the benefits of this new moon over the six months that follow. <sighs> Technically, the Vestal Flame is single and celibate and is in your house of marriage. And for a very few of you, this could indicate some changes in a significant home-based relationship in your home life because you may, if you've already been partnered, decouple. All right. Decoupling could look like this Vestal Flame of the celibate single feminine energy in the seventh. This decoupling, though, is resetting you for six months so that you can experience some deeper healing, maybe even healing those childhood wounds as you and some significant other may separate as a result of this particular new moon. Okay. Don't forget, Jupiter is the Lord of your sign. He's taking care of your health. He's taking care of your work and your pets and your rental situations. Trust the story. But happy surprises can come here as well. Could be a happy surprise about a new job, especially with Juno at the top of the sky. Hey, Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising. Well, you have a new moon, a new beginning, obviously, starting March the 10th, and a couple of weeks after, and up to six months after, where this new beginning is unrolling a new set of directions or focuses for you in the house of your younger sibling or siblings in general, the neighbors and neighborhood, childhood, friends, travel trips, skills-based education and learning, and your daily environment, your everyday environment, the stores or grocery stores, wherever you go on the daily, your neighborhood. Neighbors and neighborhood. Well, it's a new beginning. So if something fresh is trying to happen, you got Hygieia, you want to have a, a, a new beginning that's quite healing, a heal a sibling relationship could come from this. Saturn is uh, giving you structure and form to do it. But where have you kind of maybe had the risk of falling falling from the sky. Now, because it's not always you, right? Third house people could be that childhood friend, the cousin, sibling, neighbor, or whatever, they may have had a fall from great height. They may be like picking themselves up, up at the floor and you're witnessing it in a flowing way from your Capricorn identity. Yet this new beginning brings happy surprises in sexuality, love, and romance, 
in things to do with children, the stupider signature could mean you're going to be a grandparent. If you have grown children, these are the happy surprises that delight you that come out of left field, but flow in a great way to the from the fifth to your third. If you're an entrepreneur or consultant and you're not in an employment structure, then this can be consulting opportunities that involve travel, social media, and online world stuff uh, that come popping out of the sky in the two weeks or six months that follow this moon. The sky is really looking at you having to consider the possibility of an educational opportunity that also puts you in alignment with your deeper and more natural talents in life that may be surprisingly positive coming up for you as well in the two weeks and or six months after this March 10th moon. You want to tend a flame of devotion to your physical health and well-being, to your work environment and work habits and routines, to your pet, to rental situations. Now, when I say tend a sacred flame to your pet, I don't know what that means. Persevere and devote yourself to your animal, or maybe get a devotional pet. Maybe you need a pet. Maybe you're ready for a pet. Also, hey, you know, health matters. Do you want to prevent sickness? And this is where this is where you have um, the potential to not be sick. So what flame has to be perseveringly devoted, devotionally tended for health matters to prevail. Saturn is the Lord of your body and he's in the story of this new moon. Maybe join the local club in the neighborhood. Maybe start doing some kind of online program that helps you learn how to tend a better flame of health for your life. That looks like one of the ways this could be playing out. Hi, Aquarius. I'm one of you. I'm Aquarius rising. But this is for Aquarius rising sun and moon. New beginnings in our money and earnings house. Every year, March, there's a new reset button here. This one has different qualities, of course, than the last one. Saturn is here. If you're an Aquarius rising, Saturn is helping us structure our money and be disciplined, focused, and hardworking between last March and March and February of 26. We don't mind him. He's the Lord of our sign. So he's doing us a favor saving money and spending less as well. And as he's sitting here in this new reset button of a new moon, right, it's important to note his presence is important because Icarus is here, something can fall from overreach and overstriving. And that can be a fall in our earnings because we push too hard in some area. So be careful for maybe earnings financial stretch in terms of burnout or, you know, overstretching or overreaching in a couple of weeks after the moon, perhaps. The same time, what we have in this new beginning reset button is hygiene, fiscal hygiene, probably spending hygiene specifically, looking at the how much you spend, perhaps even creating a budget or a savings plan can come off the two weeks and six months that follow this moon for a lot of Aquarians. Also, if you're trying to restrict, restrict your diet, Saturn is here, right? Until February 26, the lean one, right? The stoic stern lean one is moving through our, our eating and ingesting house. I'm trying to write a book called The Wine Lover's Middle Way. Everyone knows it about me. What are you guys trying to restrict that goes in your mouth? Because that's what Saturn's helping you do. And this is where you might look at the high, the hygienic energy, like uh, dietary hygiene, right? So I know that I'm starting a reset button on a cleanse. So that could be that whole, you know, I'm going to go whole 30 and stuff like that, do thyroid cleanse and stuff like that. What are you guys doing? You Aquarius, do you have any cleansing paths that you're thinking of starting anew um, in, in March to go along with this new moon? Uh, because you have happy surprises coming from the fourth house of tenancies and rental, I mean, sorry, rental... <laughs> Homeland property issues, including buying and renting and selling, because this is your domestic environment as well. Breaking some rules, unexpected happy surprises, yay you, maybe in the two weeks after or the six months after this moon, there's those sorts of surprises on the way. The moon is the ruler in the new moon structure of your six house of of rents, rents and tenancies. You may get a great new rental opportunity to rent a property out or be a tenant. As a result, a happy surprise in this moon. Similarly, you can have a chance to buy a house just because of Juno here and the wealth god Orcus flowing to Jupiter. Some of you may be looking at a home purchase or sale that does really well in the two weeks or six months after this moon. Unfortunately, this can also look like inheritance monies coming through marriage partners and their side of the coin. They could be getting some wealth, doesn't have to be inheritance, and that could be benefiting you in your home life in the six weeks that follows this moon. I love the vessel flame for Aquarius is because we have to tend a sacred flame to what brings us pleasure, joy, and fun. 
Who doesn't want to do it, but we often get too busy to do that. Also, sexual and romantic love, to be very temple prostitute here, tend the flame of your sex life, tend the flame of your romantic life, tend the flame of your relationship with a child, tend the flame of your creativity and your creative projects and your entrepreneurial businesses if you have them. So that you can have greater ease and goodness in a new beginning that's quite hygienic with your money and your dietary style. Pisces, this is you. First and best and always best, last and some, somewhat never least. Oh my God, it's a joke on my channel. Um, the beginning of a new beginning in the house of you, right? I mean, here we go again. You reset. We all have a new moon every year. This is yours. This March 10th new moon is asking you to look at your health. It's squarely putting you into what is your better methods of prevention of health challenges. Hygiene is often quite preventative on health, mind, body, health, health, spirit, body, mind, health, all of it, body, mind, spirit as well. What do you need to do so you don't fall from a great height? Because Saturn here makes you serious, realistic, hardworking, and sober-minded, but also can constrain and restrict your physical vitality. This is a transit that goes on through to 2026, started last March 23. So you have this sense maybe of feeling more anxious, more worried, more heavy, more burdened a bit as Saturn is going through this part of your sky, giving you this sage-like wisdom, but sometimes some kind of burden, some feeling emotionally, mental, or physically, depression, anxiety, or physically being challenged, feeling like you're old. <laughs> and you want to rejuvenate, a new beginning, a new moon, hygiene. What are you going to do to tend your health, your body, and your mental wellness as well? And because you're also looking at happy surprises coming from your third house, Happy surprises around travel trips, siblings, happy surprises may be connected to your online world, your social media land, to neighbors and neighborhoods, right? My Pisces sister's moving to a new neighborhood eventually. What a happy surprise. She'll probably love it there. But it's this new beginning in you that runs over six months connected to lucky and happy developments that take you unexpectedly uh, because of your honest. You can be very prosperous or bounteous and successful in the online world, especially with writing projects or online stuff that you're doing. Jupiter is su suggesting also some great opportunities that surprise you that are lucky and wonderful to educate yourself, learn something new in the six months and even two weeks that follow the moon. Sign up for a course that's going to just dazzle you, especially one that's got uh, something to do with your natural talents and abilities, because that's your fifth house and the moon is a ruler of that in this new moon. Um, possibly as well, some really happy surprises coming through a sibling and benefiting you directly. Now, one thing about where you need to tend a devotional flame, it's in your home life. I mean, are you cooking in the kitchen? This is the hearth fire goddess. She's your easy bake oven and she's your oven and stove and your, what is it? The wolf, fire up your wolf grill or whatever kind of fire, you know, fire tending stove you have. It's really saying, honestly, in order to be more healthy, cook at home. Tend the flame of your hearth fires. Cook your meals. Tend the sacred flame. Now, you could also set up an altar and do meditations and do devotional rituals in your home. You're needing to tend a sacred flame in your domestic and private life. The home is asking you to be sacredly dutiful. And it can be a sacred flame to people in your home and how you relate with them as well. So I'm wishing you then great sacred flame tending, but I suggest this looks like becoming a kitchen goddess <laughs> in order to improve your health. It's all about what you create and eat and make happen in the home, in my humble opinion. That's a big part of what we're seeing here. All righty, especially given that the sun also rules your house of sickness. So again, we have a whole set of circumstances suggesting to tend to sacred flame of better eating by better chefing in your home for many of you Piscean sun, moon and rising. Okay, we cannot live on takeout pizza <laughs> on the daily or uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken or whatever else you fishes are eating. Thanks for listening. Um, hit the like button, subscribe. Don't forget Sky Reader starting. This is being recorded February 27th, early access ad free for Patreon. Come join me for five bucks a month. You're going to get uh, a Zoom meeting a month with me. You get two free courses I'm giving away, Chiron, the key to purpose and Sinistry. Are you my person for you trying me out for the, even the lowest tier? You don't like what I'm doing. You keep the courses anyway and leave no harm done, right? Try my community out. You'll like it. 
come visit. You don't, you can leave with the gift. So check that out as well. Thanks to my regulars who are probably still here trending with me. I'm winding down on Tuesday the 27th. It's snowing outside in Vancouver, Canada. It is 321 in the afternoon. And anything else I want to say? Well, since it's just us left at the very end of the video, if any of you ha loves wine and you've been working to become a moderate, you're already a gray zone drinker, you're trying to find a middle way with wine and you have some ideas or success stories, I would love to hear from you. Email me at laurie at lunaticastrology.com, laurie at lunaticastrology.com and in the header say wine lovers middle way. I love to hear your narrative so I can understand my own, but also Hey, I'm writing a book on it. So I can put you in the book. I don't have to name you. Anecdotes are useful. Um, I find the wine lover's middle way cannot be a version. Like, you know, the AA, push it away. It's bad. It's evil. I need God to help me. White knuckle it. Oh no, I fell off the wagon. Get my, you know, have to start all over. That's the aversion model. And then of course the other model is not here, right? The other model would be like cravings and, you know, wanting and then the aversion, anti-aversion model is probably taking good breaks and cleansing from alcohol or wine and then going back, you know, and being like, oh, I cleansed for 40 days. Now I can go back to my old ways. There's got to be a middle way and I'm trying to find it. So if you have suggestions, I really would love to hear from you. I mean, anything, email me, please do. I will, not in the comments because I might miss it. But if you email Lori at Lunatic Astrology, headline, subject matter, wine lovers middle way, I will scan for that in my emails. Okay. Thanks everyone. Ooh. <laughs> Check it out, man. Wine Lovers Middle Way. It's my new brand. Bye, everyone.